Well, 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 what have we here? You're out of your league, heroes. I have foreseen the consequences of this conflict. Hello. I'm sorry that this is an hour late, and I do apologize that the tweets didn't get updated. I did message Krista, but uh, it was a bit late, and she's probably not in the office this week. I think Handelabra, the entire Handelabra office is, you know, on vacation or something. I don't know. You know, it's like holidays. How dare they be on holiday? But I did message her and said that it was around like 3 p.m. And I said I would like for this to be pushed back to 8 because I can't do it right at 7. And <laughs> the tweet didn't go out as planned. So you're going to have to deal with the stream being an hour late. But that's okay because it's also going to end an hour late or two hours late or maybe. I don't know. But anyway, this is Dolphin's Dive as always. And uh, Handelabra in general, where is my text? There's, nope, that's not it. Where is my text? There's my text. You are watching Handelabra Games. Handelabra believes in civil rights for everyone and in being as inclusive as possible, so any comments or activity actively working against that goal is not welcome and will not be tolerated. You can follow us at Handelabra on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube, and Handelabra Games right here on Twitch. You can follow me personally on Twitter at LewDolphin21, and on YouTube and Twitch, just LewDolphin, no digits. That is just LewDolphin, comma, no digits. <laughs> Someone's like, Lou Dolphin, no digits, this isn't a valid account, lead. Sentinels of the Multiverse is currently available for iOS, Android, and PC, Mac, and Linux via Steam, and always via good old analog cardboard and ink. You can get the game and more info at sentinelsdigital.com. I feel like I've been doing a better job at reading this text, but I also feel like I've been reading it too fast. Because I always just want to get past the legalese and get to the fun part of the stream, which is where I talk about stuff and play games. So, as Hank Roy points out, this is the first episode of Dolphin's Dive because we're fighting Ultimate Chairman against Visionary, Expatriate, Chrono Ranger, and Mr. Fixer in the Pike Industrial Complex. The very first, the inaugural Dolphin's Dive game, which was here with Migrant P, but he's not here today, so it's just me. And, uh... Today, today's stream is going to be a revisit of some classic games. Unfortunately, I was going to include some statistics, uh, like what was the most played villain, who did I play the least, did I play every villain even, when was the last time I saw X villain, how many times was certain hero played, have I played every version of every hero, etc. Unfortunately, I didn't finish compiling that data before the stream, so we'll have to provide that in the next stream, which is sort of okay because I guess we could include this stream in the stats, which is going to offset it a bit, but that's okay. And then I'll be able to say like, oh yeah, this is the rundown of every single villain and hero and whatnot. Uh, but we will be revisiting some of the classic streams, some of the classic games, some of the exciting moments. Uh, this stream is going to be handled differently. For one, because I'm not doing viewer's choice, if you didn't notice. That's why last week was all viewer's choice, was because we're not doing viewer's choice this week. But also, I'm not going to read the cards this time, because I want to get through as many games as possible. So to that end, and this is going to be very different. Oh, they added the text, tap to proceed. Um, to that end, I'm actually going to move up the display times. So this is going to feel different, it's going to look different. I will still try to explain what I'm doing, but I'm not going to read the cards out. We're just going to do things. So. Why did I pick this for my first game? Was it random? Uh, I did want to do Chairman in Pike Industrial because this was the week of the Rook City listening party. And I wanted to fight Chairman in Pike Industrial with Expatriate and Mr. Fixer. And the second game was going to be Chairman in Rook City with Dark Watch Mr. Fixer and Dark Watch Expatriate. That didn't actually end up happening, but uh, we did do this intentionally and the difficulty was chosen by the viewers it was the first viewers choice was what difficulty chairman do we want and you guys chose ultimate and thus began the <laughs> the evil viewer brigade for yeah i think honestly though to to actually be transparent about this this was discussed in the 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 beta forums because it, it's, a, it's a question that keeps popping up. Like, I wish there was a setting to read the cards at my leisure. And John keeps saying, set the display time all the way to the left. And you have to tap to proceed while well, they finally added text to clarify that. Which is why that's there now. Uh, unfortunately, if you set it to short, it doesn't say we're not going to display any of the cards. That would sort of be a cool setting. 
just you're not going to see the cards you draw just every time you get to your hand you can choose i didn't go over the cards but again i'm not going to read the cards so i'm just going to leaf through it and th honestly this is what i do when i play sentinels is like the way I handle it on the stream is more for presentation purposes, but the way that I sort of play Sentinels is like, I look at the cards as soon as like it matters. I like the compounded bow, but we don't have a uh, bounty just yet. Jack handles really good with with Fixer and the Grease Monkey Fist, so he will be spreading the damage around by a bunch. But I do want to get a bounty for Chrono Ranger. Uh, Expatriate with the Tactical Shotgun is already set up. So let's give this to Chrono, get kill on sight, and just doing my job. I love just doing my job. Um, I don't think I need the temporal grenade. I don't really need to destroy anything except environment cards. And actually, I just said that. But I guess we do have an RPG launcher in case a terrible VAT comes out. Yeah, John was the brilliant and stubborn SOB. He was the one playing Visionary. And I honestly was convinced that the game was lost. So... Uh, if you don't know the game in question, uh, it was a victory, but a very narrow victory, because Chrono Ranger, Expatriate, and Mr. Fixer fell early, and it was down to the Visionary with only a few hit points, but we managed to keep her out with her invincibility for a long time, and eventually we managed to stack the Chairman deck, because eventually Visionary had her entire deck in her hand, and at that point we were super well set up. Alright, so with Jack Handle, I only need to get the muscle down to one. Compounded Bow is not going to do that, though. Uh, so I would have to play a card first. Or I could Terrible Text Strike, but I want to hold on to that. So let's Eye on the Prize. I love Eye on the Prize, but I like to keep it when I have by any means an ultimate target and Hunter and Hunted, but we don't have that. So I'm going to have to use that up for the extra damage. And then go ahead and whale the muscle. I do want to get the muscle in the trash. The enforcers can stay out. Hello, Bullnerap. How are you doing? So, for those of you who have just pi just piled in, we're going to play these games a little more differently because they, these are actually revisits of older games. And so we're going to discuss more of the history of these games, I guess. And some exciting moments that came out of these games as opposed to direct strategy, I guess, although we'll still discuss direct strategy, like the Jack Candle. But we're not having viewer's choice, so we're just gonna go over these games, like the first game ever. The Escaped Lab Rat, targeting the Enforcers, and in fact... Oh, he is also targeting one of these guys. We'll throw it on Fixer. We don't really want Fixer to be too high on HP, because Operative is going to target Fixer. And with the Nemesis bonus, it's not good. Oh, right, and this is Ultimate, so the first time you put another boss in the trash, he flips, but that's okay, because I don't want the AoE damage to happen. We don't have the fence, so that's fine. Uh, we don't want this damage to go through, so let's ditch something. A and the Informant, so... And then we have to destroy something. So demoralization is going to hurt Visionary by a bunch. We do need to get rid of the informant ASAP. Uh, we don't have any damage means on Visionary's end, though. Toast the Ether is great. But... I mean, I guess it's sort of okay for like him to play cards as long as Prison Break comes out. Even though we would see the muscle return, but at least... Um, we would burn that prison break. But we don't have damage here, and Expatriate does have damage, but it's after another card play. So let's go ahead and get a Twist the Ether out on the Chairman. And there's the contract. That's actually perfect because we can dispatch with the contract and not see a hired gun. Uh, so I want to try to get Fixer's Harmony. I mean, instead, got some pretty good cards. But, um, I don't think I'm going to be, use, be using Pipe Wrench. So, do I play a card, or do I just take out the Informant? Uh, I don't think I want to play a card. I'll just take out the Informant. There are two prison breaks and ten cards, so it's not too likely we'll get a prison break out. 
So if we can get the contract out, that would be great. And I believe that is doable with a terrible tech strike. So let's do that. And then Fixer with... Whoa, what was that? Fixer with his damage increase will help a bunch. Because once I get this Grease Monkey Fist out, we have good AoE damage. As is usual, I am not caught up on the letters pages yet. But I do know the Cargra episode came out recently, and I do look forward to hearing it. Alright, so I don't know the rest of this particularly matters. I guess it does sort of matter, like, in terms of if I, if I take out the thief, the operative's gonna do something, but I can control this damage a bit. Thank you, Twist Ether, minimizing that damage. So, honestly, this would be a good opportunity for a chemical explosion to come out. Because this would wipe the board except for the fence. I would like the broker to be gone, but that's okay. Oh, okay, chemical explosion. Like I said, perfect. Chairman is immune to it, of course. But with the HP recovery on the challenge rules, it doesn't really super matter. We could actually control who the operative's hitting if we were to target the heroes first. But that's okay. So we're actually in a pretty good spot because we already took out the hired gun. So as long as the prison break doesn't come out. Perfect Human Specimens is a dead card when they're at max HP. And the Deputy is the last underboss in the deck. So we're doing pretty well. Though we do have to burn one of these cards. Um, I guess I could ditch Compounded Bow. Currently it's not super useful. It's only one extra hit point. Nothing to rest the mind on. And I don't really want a telekinetic cocoon. But now with Twist Ether on the chairman, I'm a little more willing to demoralize. Although I guess with the advanced rule of reduced damage dealt to them by one, it doesn't actually matter. Um, we do have lots of guns on Expat. Um, I, I think we still want Harmony on Fixer. Salvage Yard is great. Hoist Chain is okay. But with Salvage Yard, I will ditch the equipment. Suggestion, excellent. Suggestion is great against the Chairman. Um... The Assault Rifle... Although I think I want to shotgun the Crooked Cop. Because then we'll be able to get rid of him with Fixer. And let's go ahead and sudden contract, I think. Yeah. I think we'll put, let's see, ultimate target would be great the first time someone deals damage. But let's put by any means first. Make it easier to get rid of the chairman. Uh, I wish I could hit the deputy, but I have to take out the crooked cop first to do that. So we'll do that. So I won't be able to take out the deputy, which means we will still see a crooked crop in the next round, but this is fine. Uh, is it safe to bloody knuckles? No, because Chairman's gonna react. Um, do I want to overdrive and get it into the trash so then I could salvage it? Yeah, I'll do that. And I don't think order matters. By any means, it's super good. Of 
course that four damage hurts a lot. All right, so with suggestion on the next round, um, we can at least forestall that uh, prison break. And once all the underbosses are gone, we can replace the jack handle with dual crowbars, which is even better. Irradiated cyclohexene vat. Well, there's gonna be a lot of damage happening. So hopefully this is not a prison break, and it's not. More HP recovery, but I believe that's the last perfect human specimens. Which is great. But we will be hitting the chairman. Well, I guess with by any means we're always hitting the chairman. Although with the crooked top, right, never mind, okay. Um, suggestion has to be done. So you don't want to put an underboss in the deck because the operative will pull it out. Uh, and I don't really want them to keep regaining HP because that's going to freeze the game. Not the, the game's not gonna freeze. Sorry, no, we're not. Gonna, this is not a bug. It's not gonna freeze the game. I didn't just mention a bug. No. Um. Honestly, like it might be better to get an enforcers out because we could just discard a card for that. In fact, let's put two enforcers back in the deck. Now who wants cards? I really want Chrono's hat, but I still want Fixer's uh, harmony. Meditation is good. Overdrive is fine. I want to play the dual crowbars. I could play toolbox, but no. Oh, discard the toolbox. Who needs a toolbox? All right, so now we know what Chairman's playing. Um. All right, Assault Rifle will take out the Crooked Cop. So that's good. Um, let's get the submachine gun out. Put out all the guns and then we could unload, maybe. But if I hit the crooked crop, then I can take out the deputy. Now, do I want to go after chairman or operative? Let's go after chairman. Why not quick draw? <laughs> um, because I want to make sure I can get both Pride and Prejudice at the same time. All right. But yeah, if I played quick draw and then I didn't have any other play, I would play flak jacket or submachine gun, which would not put Pride and Prejudice next to each other, which is the real goal. Hold one target. There we go. Now I could hit the chairman and do three damage, but then I don't have a power to use. I'll just do this hit on the operative, even though it's only one, but then I can act on Fixer's turn. And there's my hat. So now let's pull out the dual crowbars. And let's do the big hit. Actually, no, because the, the the damage boosts on chairman. Let's do the first hit on the chairman, and then the big hit on the operative. It's less damage to the chairman, but more damage to the operative. Whereas it would be le much less damage to the operative, but only slightly more damage to the chairman. And now I can safely hit the chairman with this hit because he's already reacted. And now I can hit the operative. Bloody knuckles. 
So I would love to use that, but I don't really have a reason to just yet. Unfortunately, this is gonna hurt. Hit points are getting a little low. In fact, if Fixer hits Chairman, Fixer dies now. So I do have to be careful. I don't anticipate being able to Bloody Knuckles now. Oh, though I could play Bloody Knuckles and just have Fixer sacrifice himself. But, again, Chrono can use a power. Get the chairman even lower. And since I've already hit the chairman, I might as well use up damage on the chairman. And then... At this point, I really don't know. <laughs> um, Expat. Quick draw, so we can now do Pride and Prejudice. And Pride! Well then. I'm gonna discard Pride. <laughs> Why would I do such a thing? Because then I could quick draw for it anyway. But actually, I think act I'm not gonna do that though. I'm gonna flak jacket because this is gonna hurt. Uh, hit the uh, uh, hit the uh, 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 hit the chairman because oh no, this will stop Chrono Ranger from reacting. But I will save hit points, so this is useful. Oh no! All right. My goal is for the rat to want to target Chairman. Even though he can't do damage to Chairman, we'll at least save Fixer. Maybe. Let's get the hat. Congratulations, Mr. Chomps, you single-handedly saved the universe! Alright, Masada's gonna do really well, actually, because there's two bounties. And they both increase damage, and I get past the damage res damage reduction. So I could actually take out Chairman right now. And I could also take out the escape lab rat. So I don't have to worry about the damage. Um, so now it's a game of take out the operative. But chairman is down. Look at all those damage boosts. That's ridiculous. Uh, unfortunately, we lose Twist to Ether, and by any means, Ultimate Target is now just sitting out there. But 9 damage to the operative. I'm happy with that. Can I actually take out the Lab Rat, or no? I don't think I can. So since I can't... Or no, if I do the first hit on the operative, then I could take out the Lab Rat. Yeah. I'm trying to save Fixer. And we'll take out the rat lab, lab rat with infernal damage. Okay. So, uh, the terrible one that would come out is the one that does one and one and one damage. Instead, we get the biomimetic. Which is nice, it's giving us hit points. And it's honestly one of my favorite environment cards. Because it prevents some amount of damage and it uh, provides HP recovery. And this is a fine card. I am okay with this card. It's better than Prison Break. 
Visionary discard a card. Now I wish I would had rested the mind on the enforcers. Which I could do, potentially. So I'm gonna t discard the cocoon. Although I don't know, well, okay, now damage isn't happening now. The double damage reduction. But I can still suggest, I could suggest the chairman. That is probably not a card you want to have played. But what would be, is there something else? I don't want something else. Uh, I don't want hired guns. <laughs> I don't want informants. I don't want crooked cops. Undivided attention, I guess, is probably best. I also don't want HP recovery, really, but. Yeah. But the undivided attention's back. Maybe we'll find a way to redirect that. Uh, Harmony? Maybe? Cards? Yeah, let's try to get... Um, it's not Salvage Yard. You didn't get it, though. I, ha I do have a bounty board, though, so that will work fine. Plus, I could, use ba I could use Jim's hat to destroy Ultimate Target and then put it on the operative. Yeah, so that's fine. Let's lose kill on sight. Because I can get it back. Actually, that's that's what I should do. If I'm going to discard a card, I should discard a card that I'll just put back in my hand anyway. There's the strategy. Alright, let's get the pride. Or prejudice. Actually, that's the one I wanted because that's the left one. But, Fixer can take out the enforcers. So this is certainly playing a lot differently than it was with John because we have not seen a prison break. Look at those bounties. Unfortunately, I can't do damage with that. And I don't want to take out the enforcers because I want Fixer to ping it. Especially because ultimate target will let uh, uh, Chrono Ranger use a power. And irreducible damage is great when you have a DR of two. And there's a Hunter and Hunted, so this is great. So we know what the operative is playing. We don't, however, know what the environment's playing, so let's be safe. Um, do I want to salvage yard? And get uh, compounded bow back? I have equipments there. You never have equipments. Yeah, let's salvage yard. Now is the time for Salvage Yard. All right, and then operative to damage. So Masada. I could Masada the enforcers, I guess. I suppose that's a thing I could do. All right, unfortunately, I don't have a second hit unless I want to sacrifice someone. Or I could, mm, no, we'll just play it safe. Pretty sure we have this, unless the environment does something awful. Because we know the operative is going to play. And now I can call this the operative deck because chairman's out of the picture, but we know the operative is going to play a damage dealer. Super cool Trisolvent Vat would have been awful in the previous round. It would have killed Mr. Fixer for sure. It would have done six damage. The Vat explosion wouldn't have killed us, though. This is a bit annoying, though, but... This is one of those cards I actually fast forward for, because... Having to do three instances of damage for each target takes a lot of time, especially when there's a lot of damage modifiers out there. Yeah, I don't want to hit Chrono Ranger. That would be bad. 
Um, although now I can't really have expat destroy the super cool trace elven vet, so maybe I don't want to do that. Um, do I want to do that or not? Because now expat can't ride in prejudice, but I don't really think she can do much of anything. Now let's, um, let's do that differently. Um, play a card. Do this on Prano. Yeah. Because then... Expat can destroy the super cool Trisolvent Vat and spare Chrono from dying. Nothing to rest. And no real need for decoy projection. Eh, we'll play it anyway. It's something for Fixer to hit. How about that? And Chrono, get more cards. There's the Ranger's Mark. So I could put by any means in the trash and have Ranger's Mark play it. And that way I do damage. Alright, so RPG Launcher. I could destroy the VAT. The the VAT, which VAT? The Biomimetic Plasma VAT and then do more damage. But I'm pretty sure we're fine. Stop dealing damage. Um, and there's no need to play a card, so we'll just go with the big hits. This is certainly playing a lot differently than it was back in May or whatever it was. It's been a long time. All right. Hunter and Hunted first, and then Ranger's Mark, because now I get an extra two damage from this hit. And then Masada, does this win the game? Oh yeah, look at that. Seven irreducible damage, yes please. And we've won. I mean, we still have a grand total of 12 hit points across four heroes, but we still beat Ultimate Chairman. Even in the rematch, he loses miserably. All right. So that finishes game one of the evening in 35 minutes. We beat Ultimate Chairman in 35 minutes as opposed to the one hour and 55 minutes of the first game. Now for something entirely different, uh, Trip Down Memory Lane. That was the first Dolphins Dive game ever. And it did have a little viewer's choice on that, and that you got to choose the difficulty and you chose Ultimate Chairman. But do you remember the first viewer's choice game? The very first game? When I said you guys get to choose the game? Do you remember the game that you chose? Do you? I'll give you a second, actually. Do you remember the first Viewer's Choice game? Happened on the second stream, and a little bit of a behind the scenes note that I'm sure I've shared before, but I wasn't sure exactly the format of Dolphin's Dive even going into my second stream. Because I knew that without John there, I was going to be flying solo, and I wanted to make sure that my stream had some distinguishing feature to it. And so I figured, like, if all, all I did was played my own games, people wouldn't be that interested, unless I was that good at the game or something. So I thought maybe viewer's choice would be cool, because at least I would be able to interact with the viewers and get their insight on things. And so viewer's choice then became a staple. The usual pattern of streams is like a fixed, predetermined game, just to make sure there's something exciting. Then a viewer's choice game where you screw me, and then a random game where <laughs> the randomizer screws me. So here we have some responses. We have Ultimate Iron Legacy. Was that our Iron Legacy obsession? Ultimate Spite, Citizen Dawn, Ultimate Dreamer. And in fact, Hankroid got it right. It was Ultimate Iron Legacy. And it was even worse than that because it was in Rook City. I even have some, inf some and I have an incomplete spreadsheet here of games. But it was Ultimate Iron Legacy in Rook City against Dark Watch Setback. Uh, I can't actually read this. That's Scholar of the Infinite. 
uh, base unity, and guys. This was the first viewer's choice game. And this was when I realized you guys really love to give me terrible games. And so I vowed never to play this game again. Let's fight! I will never let down my guard. Justice must be dispensed to all. Now! Stand down, evildoer! You are faced by heroic heroes, and we're good at things! You know, setback as a kid was the kid that hold, held sand. He's the kid that fights for our freedom. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, can I even pull this up? Uh... I don't even remember what it's called. <laughs> it's... I don't have permission to view this. No! Well... Can I even share this? How about I just do it on stream? That would probably be a bit better. But first, I'm going to... <laughs> Hold on a second, guys, while I get this set up. Um... Except I don't want to do this on... That. So if I open none on that, that doesn't screw anything up. Why is that stretched? Whatever. Uh, I'm almost there. Actually, this is going to be funny, if I do it like this. <laughs> this is Setback as a Kid. Stand down, evil tour! <laughs> that was Setback as a wee lad. <laughs> Alright, uh, let's get rid of that. But yeah, that, that, like, honestly, when I read setbacks saying, stand down, evildoer, we're heroic heroes, that is basically what I think. Alright. I'm prolonging the inevitable. Alright. Final evolution. That's fine to start with because he doesn't have any damage boosters. Except for unity, of course. Demoralizing presence. Vigilance. Ugh. Superhuman redirection, but that's sort of okay. And then armored fortitude. Scrumptious. Three legacy versus iron legacy would be awful because you have no ongoing destruction. Yeah, there's no galvanize, and he only has one... Uh damage increase right now but we don't have destructions you don't have any destructions jeez look at this I could play a card for legacy to hit me dark watch setbacks power is pretty useless when legacy's damage is irreducible in fact it doesn't even matter to have ongoing destruction because he'll bring cards back which sucks. Uh, I'm not going to do anything here. I'm just going to sit back and watch. But you can thank my loyal viewers for setting up this game. Alright, Vigilance. The first time a player plays a hero card, deal damage. So... I guess theoretically... We can alchemical redirect and have all that redirect to Scholar. I don't think that's necessarily a wise play. We could try to flip Iron Legacy, which isn't really that wise. But if with with alchemical redirection, at least the redirect would go to, to a Scholar, and on this side, 
his damage is no longer irreducible. Because the whole irreducible damage thing is super annoying. But still, with Vigilance out, uh, that's going to hurt. Uh, no ongoing destruction, so can't do big hits. He'll regain HP at the start of his turn. I could put out, like, keep moving into a mortal form, but if I regain a hit point... Or I, I guess with Transmuted Recovery, I could regain two hit points and then hit Iron Legacy for one. Just so he regains it back. I can't use my base power because he'll regain it back with Final Evolution. There's not really many options here. I'm just going to skip skip. Proverbs and Axioms is more okay, though. Alright. Uh, I could get Champion Bot out, but Iron Lexi is going to hit him. And then again, I could... Like, I could get Champion Bot out to sh start up the Powered Shockwave damage, but... We'll regain it back. Brainstorm to be dealt damage to draw cards and not do damage. Nah, let's just skip skip. This is just a sort of <laughs> terrible start. Gritty Reboot, though. I could play that to draw a card. Like, best card ever. And then I can't actually hit Legacy, but I could draw a card. Start getting set up. Not really set up, but... Maybe we'll find ongoing destruction. There's a retcon, but still don't really want to destroy an ongoing card just for it to come back. Toxic Sludge. Doesn't help when Legacy's immune to, to environment damage on this side. But, guys gets lots of cards. It's a bit unfortunate because, like, Scholar is usually really great at tanking, but when Iron Legacy's damage is irreducible, it's really hard to figure things out. There's more damage, and we have to discard cards now. Must discard two cards. I don't anticipate friendly fire being a thing in this game. I don't anticipate solids of liquid being a thing in this game. I don't anticipate knowing when to turn loose in this game. Uh, now this is a little more problematic, but we'll ditch that one. And I don't want to ditch any of these, but champion bot, I guess, isn't too exciting. Guys could destroy his card, sure. I lose the draw on this end of turn action, but I mean... Am I really gonna win at this point? I don't think so. Unity can't play a card or she dies. In fact, I don't think anything can happen at this point to save us. Oh boy, reckless rush, I guess. Do one point of damage, don't use a power now. And then... Keep moving... Into a mortal form. Proverbs and Axioms, I guess I could give everyone hit points and at least... Sch Scholar could do a damage to Legacy. Still can't use a power, but I can do a damage with mortal form. There's another retcon. Regain hit points. Regain hit points. Deal damage. Regain hit points. Regain hit points. Don't use a power. If I play a card, Unity dies because two damage plus one plus one is four. And there's no equipment out. Unity doesn't really work well with heroes who don't have equipment cards, because she has to sacrifice everything herself. Fun fact. Yeah. But alright, here we go. Retcon. 
Now Vigilance doesn't really matter, but get rid of Armored Fortitude. And then Retcon. Actually, if I draw a Retcon with best card ever, I'll rewind and show off something. But it is better to destroy damage reduction first. Uh, get rid of the final evolution, I guess. Play a card. Guys, the Barbarian. Maybe we can flip Iron Legacy. I shall play best card ever. Selling out total beefcake. That is actually interesting. Uh, say cheese. I have to. They have to have five or fewer. I could sell out and then get a bunch of these things out. Actually. Yeah, let's sell out. Experimentally refreshing. <laughs> and then let's see if guys can stay alive. Um. Unity's down. <laughs> Dr. Tremada! All right. Ooh. 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 Except I think Superhuman Redirection screws this up. I was going to think I could have this go to to guys to redirect to Iron Legacy, except this redirects back to Dr. Tremata, so that doesn't actually do anything. Okay. Well, I do want to play three ongoings. Normally you would want to play one shots, but I'm going to play ongoings. Super Ultra Kawaii. Oh, right, Vigilance is still out. So actually, let me take that back. I'm going to discard, let me see that, and then play Total Beefcake. Because look at this. And then Extreme. And then Super Ultra Kawaii. <laughs> Falling Statuary. And... I mean, I could have it... Oh, guys would die. Tramada would die. Unity's dying anyway. Like, Unity is gone. At the end of turn. So, let's just get rid of Unity. Although, guys is redirecting. Actually, no, I don't want to do that. Because I want... Because I want... I want to redirect... I want to redirect Iron Legacy's damage to Iron Legacy. <laughs> That's the only thing I can do here. And actually, Vigilance is going to be really interesting. Every time Guys plays a card, or the first time each turn Guys plays a card, Iron Legacy deals damage to Guys, which redirects to Iron Legacy? And it's irreducible? Final evolution. So, okay. Former allies. So I don't really want to discard a card with guys, but okay. Um. <laughs> Not sure. There's a chance. So you're saying there's a chance. Oh no, Armored Fortitude. There goes everything. And Guys was dead anyway, so never mind. There goes my great plan. There goes my great plan! Guys could have won the game, but he screwed it up himself. Damn it, guys. All right, let's see, draw a card, use a power, reveal a card. Draw a 
draw a card. If Scholar plays a card, he's dead. And then, can Unity do something? Draw a card, play a card, regain two hit points. Which is not a power. So, discard exactly one card. Is that new text? Is that new text? Why does that say exactly? I don't remember there being exactly one card. If the discarded card is one shot, they may draw two cards. However... Oh, is this because it's foil text? I don't remember the however being there either. If the discarded card was an ongoing or equipment card, one here at target and play regains two hit points. Reveal the bottom three cards of the villain deck. Sneakily put one on top of the villain deck, one joyfully in the trash, and then with great trepidation put one in the play. If there are four or fewer environment cards in play, destroy one of them. If there are more than four environment cards in play, destroy two of them. Well. Hmm. Well, we're going to do this one. Discard an ongoing and regain two hit points and do a damage to Iron Legacy. What? And then falling statuary. But guess what? The second lowest <laughs> target is Iron Legacy. Joke's on you. But now he's flipped, so his damage is no longer irreducible. That's the good news. The bad news is we're dead. I think that actually lasted longer than last time. I think I've gotten better at this game or something. Guess what? This is actually a terrible game. Why would anyone suggest this game? Who in their right mind thinks this is a game that Dolphin should play? You should be ashamed if you think that this is a game the Dolphin should play. It's on you. I did not want to try again. That was not what I wanted to do. <laughs> I did not want to try again, damn it. All right. What's next on this wonderful train? That was my first two games. <laughs> now I don't know what to do with the third. Uh, that was also the first loss of the stream, by the way. Um, we have had some fun games over the years. <laughs> over the years. <laughs> So I got as far as 18 episodes of Dolphin's Dive on the spreadsheet. Anything after that is just lost. <laughs> ha! We're left-minded folks here. Why you gotta discriminate against the lefters, dude? Alright, let's go for a game I lost. And try it again. Uh, and let's try another viewer's choice game. I guess I could go with, like, a random game. Because one of the features of Dolphin's Dive has always been the, uh... The first game is pre-selected, second game is viewer's choice, and third game is random. And random has provided some games that are weirdly worse than viewer's choice. But... Let's see. Well, I had a long string of victories here, and then I lost to misinformation. <laughs> Of all people. Uh, oh, there's the game we forfeited. Let's do that one. Do you remember the one game that I forfeited? There's a little bit of an issue here in that I don't remember how this was actually spread out. But this was a team match against Omnitron X, Tempest, and Scholar of the Infinite again. We were fighting in the Realm of Discord. And we were fighting against Greaser. Baron Blade and La Capitan. Unfortunately, because this spreadsheet isn't that granular, it doesn't actually specify which was standard, which was advanced, which was challenge, which was ultimate. So, let's see. This was which stream? This was 14? So I have to actually pull up the video to see this. The title of the video was a series of unfortunate matches because the opening game was misinformation and I lost all three matches that game and we blamed it all on 
the RNG. All right, so I'm almost there. All right, it was Ultimate Baron Blade and Advanced Capitan. So there we go. Groovy news, Hepcats, one of you gets to be my next payday so I can show the pink lady some love with new chrome. Systems online, temporary calibration complete, weapons powering up. All right. So this was the random game, so I can't even say this was a viewer's problem. But it is possible, I would say, for this to win. So the issues is with with Ultimate Baron Blade, he's immune to his damage, and devices have a reduction of two, and advanced Capitan always destroys cards at the start of her turn, so we do have to be careful with cards. Uh, let's put this on Scholar, I don't know. Even though he's the nemesis of Greaser. All the best toys suck so much. Uh, but Scholar can also take that one. Just throw everything on Scholar. Because, I mean, with Flush to Iron, who really cares? Yeah, we do have Omniblade now, and that is Omnitron Nexus Nemesis, so devices are going to regain hit points. Which really sucks. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go put the Blade of Coating out. I'm not honestly too sure what is the most prevalent damage in general, but I sort of feel like melee and projectile are the most common damage types anyway. Let's reveal Scholar's deck. Maybe we'll get a Flesh to Iron. We gotta bring what you need. We'll put that in play. At the very least, it's dis it's a Destruction Fodder for Capitan. And what is Baron Blade doing? Empyrean. So, it's energy, which doesn't help with Omnitron. Gene bound shackles, though. Unfortunately, this will only really help against Baron Blade, and the rest of this doesn't really matter. I guess Grievous Hailstorm would do more damage overall, so I'm going to do that. I could also Chain Lightning, but whatever. Freedom 5 Legacy is great. You should be jealous that you haven't unlocked him yet. <laughs> All right, off tiempo. Chiquito steals it. And my reset got discarded because that was a card that shared a keyword. Grace under fire, though. Actually, order sort of mattered. Actually, order does matter. Here. We can have... Actually, this is why we should have played Grievous Hailstorm, because HYP Displacer can destroy everything. Greaser, your tech sucks. Apple produces better tech than you. I mean, I guess it would power up Grace Under Fire to keep more Hunter techs out, but that's okay. Keep moving into a Flesh to Iron. And then Grace Under Fire for 7 damage. Uh, which is minus one to Baron Blade, minus, or plus one actually, he's a Greaser. Or Chiquito would prevent it. <laughs> so we don't really want to do that one. It's weird, the device out is Omni Blade? That's actually fine. This card deals the hero target with the highest HP, two melee damage, and then each device regains two hit points. As long as we don't get the, th the annoying thing. Um... Let's put this on Baron Blade. Baron Blade's the one who sucks. And then this one, since Baron Blade's reducing it, I guess we could get rid of Chiquito's card. But let's hit for Nemesis damage. 
So I, I think this is a better start than the previous match. Imbued frailty. Things are gonna hurt pretty fast. Another HYP Displacer. Deals each target in this play area one Sonic and one energy, but with imbued frailty it dies immediately, so... <laughs> doesn't really matter where that goes. So that was a pretty, uh... Pretty easy Greaser turn. I could slip through time, and then I can play Rocket Punch and use Rocket Punch, so I like that. Um... I want to reveal Scholar. I love Scholar's cards. Let's put that in play. At the very least, we could just destroy it with Capitan again. Reset, and then... I played Reset, whatever. I played Reset! And then Rocket Punch, and then with the Imbued Frailty boost, this does extra damage, and unfortunately, Baron Blade reduces it, but it would do the stated damage effect. Or I could do the stated damage to Baron Blade, or extra damage to Greaser, but I'm going to target Baron Blade. When Baron Blade is gone, devices can be dealt more damage, for what it's worth. Displace the Teleporter. Which means that forced discards are happening. And Chiquito steals the card! How rude. Like Void Jelly. I remember Void Jelly. That was pretty cool. Alright, now is a fine time for Gene Bound Shackles. So hit Baron Blade for 4 damage. Hit Greaser for 5 damage. Don't hit Capitan. Hit Chiquito. And then hit Capitan, which is still going to. Not have that damage happen, but okay. That's fine. I hit the hair. Shuffle each hero trash, reveal the top card of each hero deck, discard any one-shots, and then put the other revealed cards back. And the first discard is going to get stolen. But I don't think it really matters. That's ongoing, that's one-shot, gets discarded. Although, no, it didn't get stolen. It has to be discarded from hand, I guess. Slip through time can get destroyed, although I think, uh, I don't think I'm keeping flush to iron. Or, well, I do want to keep flush to iron. But I don't think I'm keeping Mortal Form to energy. Because I can't keep the discards up. But I can still Grace Under Fire. There's still many, many targets. I'm dealing with Baron Blade without destroying Genetically Fused Physique, which is sort of weird. Generally, I want to get rid of Genetically Fused Physique before I even try dealing with Baron Blade. We have a lot of damage going on right now, and we're pretty well set up. Each player may destroy any number of their ongoing and or equipment cards. So Omnitron could have destroyed his Ablative Coating. Or not the Ablative Coating, the slip through time. At this time. Any hero with ongoing and or equipment cards deals themselves three Sonic damage. I don't want to destroy anything. Poor hair. HYP Displacer, which is again going to destroy itself before it goes off. I might as well put the Innervation Ray out and... I'm going to reveal Scholar in hopes of getting a card that will get him cards. Truth Seeker, okay. That power will let him draw cards. Mm. 
Vengeful Assault. Increased damage dealt by villain targets by one. So, actually, no, that's actually bad because we're going to lose, wait, no, we don't have any, never mind, we're fine. Oh, and Byron killed himself anyway. Ha ha! Ha! Ha ha! Chain lightning, maybe? Oh, man, now the gene-bound shackles is annoying because Chiquito is preventing that damage from happening. Um, Alright, I'll tell you what, I'll still do the biggest hit on Baron Blade, the second biggest hit on Greaser, and then I'll do this next hit on, doesn't really matter who, but get rid of Chiquito's cards, and then use Grievous Hailstorm and get rid of the other card on Chiquito, and then I can actually damage Capitan. And then the rest of this doesn't matter because 17 is the highest. Consent is always important, indeed. Consent is super important. So we're playing a bit fast and loose with hit points, but... At the start of each hero turn, reveal the top card. Well, I guess I'm losing Truth Seeker because I didn't really play anything else. Um, but yeah, Mortal Form we're gonna lose. Chiquito steals it, of course. HYP Displacer takes itself out. I expect the worst goes into play. I deal myself damage. Gets prevented. Regain hit points. Uh, I don't think that really went according to plan, Capitan. But then again, Capitan isn't really Biomancer. <laughs> Otherwise, everything would be according to plan. I have discarded one card, so I will deal myself one damage. And then I could damage Baron Blade, I guess. Or I could hit Chiquito to get rid of that card, and then maybe something will happen. But I can almost get rid of Baron Blade, so let's get rid of Baron Blade. Grace under fire. Ethereal bonds is going to get past the damage reduction, so Scholar cannot deal damage. Pink lady. That might take out Scholar. That is taking out Scholar. Scholar could not deal damage and then resultantly perished. <laughs> but Greaser is gone, is the good news. And I can do this. All right. Yeah, and I did play Innervation Array, so. Uh, oop. Reactive Plating. Almost died. No biggie. Let's just play a card, I guess. And I can take out Baron Blade. What is this in cap? It is each hero target deals itself one toxic. The good news is that Omnitron will not be dealt damage by it. The bad news is Tempest might pass. But Baron Blade's gone. Two down. Oh, no, never mind. Right, he still has three hit points. Duh. Um. <laughs> Shielding wins. Because. Uh. I'm gonna chill. I'm gonna chill. <laughs> I'm gonna chill. I can't even say this. I'm gonna chill. Chiqui I'm gonna chill. Kikito. Yes, Kikito. Kikito. I'm a chill Kikito. 
Doesn't really matter though. Yeah, Scholar ended up going down because of Greaser. Greaser always targets Scholar because he was the one. Alright, let's see. Destroy one hero ongoing card. If a card is destroyed this way, reveal cards from the top of the destroyed cards deck until one ongoing card is revealed. Put into play, discard the other revealed cards. Lock Capitan deals each target in that play area two energy damage. And it's energy, so it's not reduced by the ablative coating. And whoever does this is then going to pass away. So do I want to sacrifice Omnitron or do I want to sacrifice Tempest? Uh, at least we can destroy an ongoing card with with uh, Scholar. There's a chance, though, that Tempest could reveal uh, otherworldly resilience, but but like I guess Tempest is sort of doing the most damage, but. With Rocket Punch, Omnitron is doing a significant amount of damage, too. <laughs> Let's try Tempest. Otherworldly oh, Resilience! Tempest survives! Tempest survives! And Tempest discards a card! Bought a correspondence. Let's get stolen, and then we're destroying a card! I don't think reactive plating subroutine is going to happen! Do I Yeah, I'm gonna destroy Chronological Hotspot because that is hurting us. And then Claustrophobic Delusions. Actually, okay, Ethereal Bonds. Oh. Right. Well, by Omnitron. Tempest! It's all up to you! Off tempo. Ongoing. That player discards any cards which shares a keyword. One of these is going to get stolen. Okay. But Tempest is still alive. Draw a card, play a card. Reduce damage dealt to that target by one. That would keep Tempest alive on Baron Blade's turn. Although, right, oh, he already had otherworldly resilience. Okay, whatever. Arrgh, I want a lightning slash, but I'm gonna lose the damage, but okay, fine. Actually, I think we're dying anyway. Oh, claustrophobic delusion! Arrgh. Why? <laughs> the environment takes a full turn now. It's funny because that's supposed to be like distorted music, but... Oh no, he doesn't die. It's, it's supposed to be distorted music. That was more distorted, but it's supposed to be distorted music, but Realm of Discord's already pretty distorted, so you wouldn't notice. Time flies was almost amazing, but then we died. And then we died. All right. Well, it's not a forfeit this time, but it is a loss. We were doing pretty well too, damn it. Okay. What now? We've played the first game ever. We played the first viewer's choice game ever. We played the only match that I forfeited because in that game it was a stalemate that could have led to a loss. So now what? Um... Unfortunately, this spreadsheet does not tell me what games were close. Because we have had some pretty close games. Games where we were down to one hero, and everyone said it was basically over, and then I won. We've had several of those games.
So what should we play? I said there wouldn't be a viewer's choice, but I'm sort of leaving it up to you. I can also just say it. The stream's over. It's past nine. <laughs> it's only started at eight, but what's past nine? I already played three games. All right, let's see. Um... Well, there was... All right, so when Villains of the Multiverse came out... That week was all viewers' choice because I wanted all ten villains to be fought, and so I decided we'll just do three viewers' choice games. Any spike game. Okay, sure, that also works. I was gonna say let's do a villains game because that was like the first stream that I sort of did that, but... Uh, spite is fine because of the running gag. I guess that is sort of a greatest hit in of itself, the running gag of... Spite taking over every villain because after I played Spite I suddenly said oh let's now play a pos Spite and then I started reading apostate cards and then it's saying Spite deals damage I'm like what so we'll play Spite and we'll play the first Spite game again this was challenge Spite uh, yeah it was challenge against the team of Mr. Fixer Tempest and Absolute Zero and this was in Megalopolis. And this was a game I came up with, so this is my fault. So I guess this is sort of fitting, because we've had the John and Mark sort of mix of viewer's choice and first game ever. Then we had the first viewer's choice game, then we had a random match that forfeited. We'll close the stream out with a game that I chose. Because I chose to choose that. Hello, friends. Come. Let us get to know each other better. My tools are weapons in my hands. This fight will end swiftly. I don't think Fixer would say it that erratically, but I imagine that he probably gets mad whenever someone calls him a friend because you're not my friend, pal. Well, you're not my pal, buddy. You're not my buddy, friend. All right, there's a lab raid. Demon's Kiss. This one's fine. It deals damage everywhere, but that's okay. <laughs> Alright. I do not have... <laughs> hoist Chain. Remember when Hoist Chain was the bottom two cards of my deck? That was a classic moment. Uh, I'm gonna meditate... into Driving Mantis. I wanted it in play. That's what I wanted it. My father has a full head of hair at 65. He was fully gray by 40. <sighs> I don't like my hair. It sucks. I mean, I, my dad's gray. He's been gray for a while, so it's... Sort of unfortunate. Ah, uh, localized hurricane is a bit dangerous, isn't it? Uh, because that will increase damage to Tempest, but on the other hand, we could get closer to something that will be helpful. Electrical storm is not helpful. I guess it is sort of helpful. We can get ball lightning and the collateral damage. I was sort of, I mean, we already have cleansing downpour, but I do want to get like damage reduction. Impale, because that's like the only thing that really makes sense right now. Focused apertures, so this might be a modulus absolute zero. Impending casualty. One player may discard one card to destroy this card, and I don't really anticipate jack handle being a thing. Plus, I can always get equipment cards back into hand. At the start of each hero turn, that player may. may, uh. Discard one cards. So there's the damage increase. But at least we can redirect with Driving Mantis. Tempest will take extra damage. Plus, with PL531 Compound Upsilon, cards will be returning to hand frequently. Uh, I don't really like doing this. I'm going to overdrive, so it's my trash. I do have to be. I guess I could put. 
um, localized hurricane into hand, and then I will lose a damage boost to Tempest, which is fine. Grease God is good. No. Um. Let's get rid of that collateral damage. And now do I get something exciting? Chain lightning. Electrical storm. Electrical storm. I have three electrical storms. This game is hinting at something. All right, focused apertures. Still no module. But now I'll do extra damage despite. Impending casualty number two. Well, Tempest has three electrical storms, and Spike can never destroy ongoing cards. Or equipment cards. You can return cards to hand. That's all he can do. The Good Samaritan. And the Lost Child. Uh, it doesn't really matter. You can redirect fixers again. Driving Mantis and Pipe Wrench or Hoist Chain is a really great Mr. Fixer combination, especially against a lone villain like Spite, because um, it will keep Mr. Fixer's HP values high, as well as provide a lot of damage redirection, which is great. Oh, I did not actually want to do that. I thought I had a tool in play. I could Grease Gun, but then I can't draw a card, so I'm not gonna do that. I could do one point of damage, but I'll just draw two cards. I mean, he, Spite is already past his max HP. It's not like we're doing anything. No, no. I could put Cryo Chamber out for absolute zero. So, or I could just keep doing the localized hurricane thing. I don't really know what I'm looking for, honestly. To honestly. Um, Yeah, I'll, we'll just keep doing localized hurricane. I guess like Gene Bound Shackles and Vicious Cyclone is what I really want. Shielding Winds. Flash Flood. Otherworldly Resilience. That will at least stop Spite from regaining as many hit points. So I tend to ignore the victims on purpose because Forced entry sort of kills any reason to want to put victims under the safe house. Good Samaritan, we could put under the safe house. Or we could use to get more drugs out. But even then, I don't want to do that. Potential sidekick, perfect. And especially with a potential sidekick, I want to leave victims out. So that when Spite destroys a victim card, there are things we can destroy for fodder. The three hero, the three H fixer versus Spike game. I see what you're doing there. Um, this was the first Spike game on Dolphin's Dive. And we're playing it because this was, this was the, this came from the stream in which every villain became Spite. So in the, in the week of greatest hits, this makes sense. So I do want to keep the potential sidekick out, and I don't want to put victims under the safe house because forced entry will put them back into play, and I want there to be other victims to save the potential sidekick. So with the potential sidekick, I could just use powers willy-dilly. Um, mind fire destroys environment cards and deals damage. Yeah, so we don't have damage reduction, and we don't have uh, the, re the retaliation drug yet, so that's fine. And exactly, Technomagus, 99% of the time, which is a true statistic, Good Samaritan gets himself killed with the card that he plays. I did the math on this. This is a true. Alright, so hopefully we can get a hoist chain with Mr. Fixer. I think we just drew a pipe wrench, if I recall. Yeah, so that is somewhat useful. But Hoist Chain would be a bit better. But right now, Absolute Zero doesn't have a reason to play these cards other than to do, like, 
damage despite. I guess Frostbound Drain would only deal myself two fire damage because of Cryo Chamber. But I'm just going to skip skip and hopefully we'll get a module. Like Frostbound Drain is fine to play. I would prefer obviously to have the Isothermic Transducer out. But even Coolant Blast would be nice because then when I deal myself the fire damage, I could then output that to cold damage via Coolant Blast. But let's get the Cryo Chamber out. I'm actually lowballing that figure. I rounded down. Ooh, into the stratosphere. That will at least slow down Spite a bit. I know that one strategy with Spite is to get him flipped as fast as possible, but I sort of don't want to do that. Oh, hey, look, on the prowl. I'm going to ditch the lost child because I'm a terrible person, but more realistically, because... That hero may choose for Spite to deal them two melee damage it means that Spite regains two plus one because of damage increase HP. Um, or I could just destroy this card and Spite regains three HP and then I don't deal myself damage. A bloody knuckles that returns the hand at the start of the villain turn. That is our, yeah, that is also great. Unless he gets the drug out that does the thing with the stuff. So paparazzi came out, but that's actually great. Because it got destroyed, or sorry, it got destroyed, which is great. Silly spite thinking that you're actually Stopping us from doing things. All right, pipe wrench is what I want to play. This will this will help with fixer's HP for a bit. 103 hit points. That's great. Um, I think now is the time for cleansing downpour. Yeah, we'll cleanse downpours. Because every spite game turns into a war of attrition, which is to say that it will be a long slog, but as long as as long as you don't do something silly, you can eventually win it. So isothermic transducer for sure. It's not the HP recovery one though. I could do myself one point of damage and do spite two points of damage. I'll just skip it though. No. Impending casualty. I could leave it in play and then Spike would just destroy it, or I could destroy it and that will lower Spite's damage by one. And Tempest has a lot of cards that would be used with uh, Vicious Cyclone, but that's fine. Um, yeah, let's just return Cleansing Downpour to hand. And maybe next turn we could use uh, Bloody Knuckles. Argent is totally adorable. Oh no, another on the prowl. I'm gonna destroy another child because I'm heartless. Collateral damage, destroys another victim. So good Samaritan can pass. I like the victims that have you discard cards because that has no real negative effect. Um, I'll throw that on Fixer, that's fine. The thing with him pouting at Wager Master throwing the fiddle contest, that was great. See, this is now zero damage to everyone except Absolute Zero, which is fine. All right. No, no, no. Hoist chain? No, of course not. It's always the bottom two cards of my deck. All right, bloody knuckles. Because there's no penalty with this. And then I could cleanse the downpours again. If 
Benzene Downpour is one of my favorite cards because its HP recovery effect is so potent. And it makes sense in terms of his deck because it contrasts with Grievous Hailstorm, uh, which deals each non-hero target to cold damage, or the opposite of ice is rain, I guess, and each hero target regains two HP. It's really great, but it's also one of the most H most potent HP recovery effects. Unless you're Dr. Medico and you can regain 20 million HP to a single target if you wanted. All right, so we can get the null point. We already have a null point. But I can onboard module repeatedly because I'm cool like that. Ha! Get it? Because it's absolute zero. And then null point. And then regain hit points. And then next turn we could put out... Uh, whatchamacallit. Plummeting monorail is not going to do anything. Um, whatever Absolute Zero's card is, Thermal Shockwave, and then we can do lots of things. Alright, Bloody Knuckles returns to hand, and then we draw two cards. Another Pipe Wrench, still not Hoist Chain. It's always the bottom two cards for my deck whenever I play Mr. Fixer. Coolant Blast is a great card. Forced Entry! Hey! If I had put victims under the safe house, it would all be for not. Hey, forced entry! If I had put victims under the safe house, it would have all been for naught. Keep Thiago out. And there are five cards left in the villain deck, two of which are drugs, one of which is a lab raid, one of which is an on the prowl. Yeah, so Spite through getting a lot of hit points, but we are getting pretty well set up, so it is going to ultimately be a victory. I don't remember who said it, but someone once said Spite games are basically get to Spite's flip side, play a few rounds, see how it feels, figure out if you're going to win. If you're going to win, just quit. <laughs> if you're going to lose, you can also quit because it's terrible. Alright, bloody knuckles. I'll just keep all my bloody knuckles, that's fine. So I could discard cards for Innocent Bystander, but he does have an On the Prowl in his deck still that could still destroy a Good Samaritan, or get, destroy a victim, which could mean potential side hiccups. Good Samaritan has nothing to do with that statement. Um, I could into the stratosphere of the innocent bystander, and then we only get one card play on Spite's turn as opposed to two. I've not drowned. I've not drowned. I'm not drowned yet. I'm not drawn a gene bound shackles yet. I could. I'll just put vicious cyclone out. That's fine. And then if I get, if I get gene bound shackles in the next round, that will be fine. The problem with Spite is that all his games are exactly the same. Yeah, I've always... I've always... I don't know why I keep saying words that don't make sense. I think it's probably because of the booze. I've spent a lot of time... A lot of idle time. Not active time, but idle time. Mainly, like, when I'm driving around and I think about Spite. I've spent a lot of time thinking about how games against Spite could be improved upon. One thing that I've always thought... When the, the very first time I saw Spite's character card, and it said at the start of the villain turn, if there are five drug cards in play, Spite flips. My first impression was that there were, like, more than five drugs. There were possibly ten drugs. Say ten. I don't know. It is a big number in the villain deck, but say there were ten drugs. Then Spite flips whenever any five are in play. And then on the flip side, he doesn't play cards anymore. And so, like... That would make for the variant games, like, he only has 5 out of 10 drugs out, so that would mix up what happens. 
However, he only has the five drugs, so that does make it more annoying. In fact, they're never in the trash. I don't know why I looked there. But he only has the same five drugs, so the flip side spite is always the same, which is a massive problem, and I think it could have been improved upon simply by having more than five drugs in play, or more than five drugs in the deck. Obviously, there would be issues if, like, he played Elaborate and played ten drugs, but maybe there's ways of fixing it, like saying as soon as there are five drugs in place, flip Spite and then don't play cards anymore. Forced Entry, uh, also, as Jay-Z says, is a terrible card. Thematically, yeah. Put all cards on the safe house and play and destroy a victim. Yeah, that makes sense. The safe house isn't as safe as you think it is. But this makes putting cards under the safe house a terrible idea unless you know Spite is about to flip or Spite has played every single destroy victim card he has in his deck. Which is rare. So it makes it unlikely for you to want to put cards under the safe house when they could just come back into play. And especially with the potential sidekick who has a positive effect when he's in play, you want to make sure there's a victim buffer for him so you can keep Thiago out. Otherwise... If Thiago is the only victim in play, you put every other victim out of the safe house, and then Spite says destroy a victim card, you lose Thiago, which is not optimal. Plus, there's no reason to have cards out of the safe house until Spite's about to flip. So maybe, like, there could be some net gain for cards out of the safe house. Like, I'm just gonna, like, this is some random spitballing here. Maybe, like, there are different effects based on how many victims are in the safe house. If there are at least one victim under the safe house reduce damage dealt by spite by one when there's at least two victims under the safe house uh each hero regains one hit point at the start of the turn if there are at least three victims of the safe house uh each hero draws a card you know random effects to make you want to put cards under the safe house instead of simply spite deals himself damage at the almost like spite deals himself damage when he flips because there's really no incentive for putting cards on the safe house, other than thematically you want to save the victims. So yeah, the number of drugs not matching, making the flip side uh, really repetitive, uh, not having any incentive for cards on the safe house. I feel like there are some small changes that could make Spite a more fun villain while still keeping the theme of Spite's a terrible person who kills things. Um... I also have issues, and I'm sure I've spoke about this, but with with uh, Spite Agent of Gloom, I don't feel that his drug mechanic, his flip drug mechanic, makes that much sense. And I'm not going to talk too much about it because we're not actually playing Spite Agent of Gloom, but I will say that with three heroes, you can't ever flip a drug face down. And if you have four heroes, you have only one chance to flip a drug face down, and that's at, the, that's at the start of the second villain turn. If you miss that opportunity, you can never flip a drug face down. So, I don't feel that Spite Agents of Gloom's front side is that great, especially when you have three heroes, because you might as well ignore the text that says flip a drug face down. Alright, I'm done blabbering. Let's get back to playing games. Now, I don't actually design decks. I never, like, I'm technically a playtester on the Greater the Games forums. So I am aware of the fact that I can come up with a bunch of ideas, but they actually have to be playtested to uh, make a lot of sense. I'm not an active playtester, but I do have a lot of ideas that on the top of my head feel like they might work, but obviously I can't ever know that they would work. So, take everything I say with a grain of salt. I do have faith in Christopher's ability to design cards. But I do think that Spite in this current implementation could be improved upon to make it more fun to play. But if the intention was for Spite to be a villain you don't ever want to face, then they certainly fulfilled that, so... <coughs> <coughs> All right. Lots of cards. The Good Samaritan. And Lab Raid. Pulling out the remaining two drugs. At 
yeah, and I wasn't even discussing the whole, like, um, if Spite doesn't even play victims on his first card play, you don't really ever have a chance of flipping him, flipping any jerks face down, so. Join us on the Board Game Geek Variants Forum. There's people there that'll help play test areas. That requires me to be active. <laughs> I'm not very good at being active. You can't flip drugs face down against advanced spite agents of gloom, which I've not, I mean, I am aware of advanced uh, spites rules about flipping an extra drug. But yeah, with advanced spite, five heroes, first victim is a Samaritan, the top three cards of his deck are the other two Samaritans and another victim. Yeah. I agree. It's just a chaotic mess. Did we get a hoist chain yet? No? Okay. I didn't discard one, did I? And now when I use when I use a power, he will deal me damage now, so uh, Bloody Knuckles isn't necessarily the go-to card. The toolbox is fine. I can play that and just have it return to hand like it would. Harmony is a card I haven't seen yet. And I could still hit Spite because his retaliation damage I can redirect. Because of High Branch and Driving Mantis. Even though he regains the hit points, I can still do that. And maybe I discarded a hoist chain. You never know. I don't want to discard for that. Uh, no gene bound shackles yet. I mean, gene bound shackles against spite is going to be terrific. So, of course, it's the bottom two cards. In fact, the bottom two cards of Mr. Fixer's deck are... Oh my gosh, did they get discarded? They got discarded! Woo! We found the hoist chains! Woo! Yeah! You're dead, Spite. We broke you. Um, But we have not found the Gene Bound Shackles yet. And Spite is flipping, so I really should be discarding cards. I've been skipping that on uh, Muscle Memory. Um, I'm going to put out the Elemental Subwave Inducer. I am going to still use this because it will be a net gain for the heroes. Tempest won't get the hit points. And if I discarded a Gene Bound Shackles, that's even better because Fixer can bring him to hand. But I do want to start discarding so I can discard the things that are limited because these cards will never be destroyed. And I already have the null point in play, so I can discard the null point. And I can discard the Azothermic, because that's also in play. In fact, I should always discard equipments in general. The Gene Bound Shackles were discarded. Perfect! Which means that this Salvage Yard is going to give me everything I could ever want in life. Onboard module. Field freeze. And then, let's put out Cold Snap. Just maximize the damage. We don't have another Impale yet. Did it get discarded? No, it did not. So it's in my deck still. Uh, if I do this, is this even going to do much? He is going to hit me for three. So I'd have to regain three hit points for it to be worth it. Um, if I hit myself for two, and then whatever fire damage I do to myself, I then do back to myself, I would regain another two? Or would I regain only one? So I don't have cryo chamber in play. Like if I hit myself for two fire, I would then output three cold to myself, so I would regain one. So I would do a total of I would regain a total of three hit points. That doesn't seem worth. And I actually know what spite stop of card is, and it's on the prowl, which will destroy the good Samaritan. Who we want to put under the safe house, so no. Change the type of all damage to melee damage for whatever it's worth. Oh, I guess it does increase his self damage, so that's useful. Uh, return the toolbox to hand. Deal damage, redirect. 
You don't regain the hit points anymore, Spite. Tough luck. There are some there there is some great discussion there. I don't really have any um any contribution to the dreamer fights. I don't really face dreamer too much, honestly. But I do agree that dreamer is weird in that three heroes is easier than five heroes. Um It's sort of weird because the villains where it's easier to fight with three heroes than five heroes tend to be the villains that no one likes. Spite is one, misinformation is one, Dreamer is one. Not that people don't like the Dreamer. I think people tend to like Dreamer, but they, or at least they thematically like Dreamer, but they think that it's pretty difficult to deal with. But uh, yeah, I, I do agree. Like having uh, deck plays and damage dealing based on each does stink. Maybe it could be something like at the end of the villain turn, put. H minus two projections from the villain deck into play or something instead of just playing cards that could be one shots that deal damage instead of actually putting projections out because like I guess like I would say the idea behind dreamer is that like on the flip side she's getting more and more unstable meaning that there should be more and more projections coming out meaning that there should be actual projections coming out instead of damage dealing she's already doing enough damage on her own so all right, we have hoist chain, right? Or no, it's in my trash. I need to salvage yard it. And now I will play overdrive. Maybe. Oh, I can. Yeah, I can definitely do that. That's fine. This will do one point of damage or two points. Oh yeah, two points of damage because I got past the damage reduction and this will do me two points of damage, but that's fine. If I had another salvage yard, I could put all the equipment into my hand immediately, which would be funny. Uh, no. Toxic. And then Genebound Shackles. I would still opt for HP. We are pretty fine on hit points, but Unless I've already dealt him a first damage in a turn, I think I'm not really going to worry about trying to deal him damage. I'll, I would have only done two points of damage anyway. I think Absolute Zero is basically going to be the one who does damage here. <laughs> anyway, so... I'll put out a Cryo Chamber. And now I can really not worry about Thermal Shockwave at all. So this is going to be a path to victory eventually. So if you are bored, you can just leave right now. Like, uh, all right, one thing I've been wondering about with misinformation is how can we fix the front side so that clues actually make sense? Because their current implementation is clues come out randomly. It should sort of be that clues come out when you discover something, right? So how do we make that work? I have a problem here. I don't want to return any of these cards. These are all great right now. Um. Oh, I guess I can put out Hoist Chain now, so I don't need Pipe Wrench as much. But... Like, clues are something you figure out, not something you really fall upon, right? Unless it's like you go out for a, st for a walk, and then you just suddenly notice that your neighbor shifted his wig. And you realize, aha! He's bald! But even then, like, I don't know. Hmm. 
Whenever a distraction is destroyed, reveal cards until a clue is revealed and put it into play. That is excellent. Because that, that is excellent. Because you see past the diversion. You realize that the diversion is actually not a cat in a tree. It's not an old woman in the street. It's a diversion. We figured something out. That makes lots of sense. This is not going to do any damage. No, I can't do any damage. No. Well, I can still redirect. No, I can't because I lost pipe wrench. No. Well, we have the hoist chain. That's the good news. And now I can do lots of damage. All right. So I think I'm going to put an electrical storm out because even more automatic damage. And I don't anticipate localized hurricane being used. Remember when I said absolute zero is doing the damage here? I changed my mind. This is this is Tempest's game now. But automatic damage is best damage. I still find it weird that you have to shuffle your trash into your deck and then discard more cards. <laughs> I'm regretting my quest for Hoist Chain. No! Alright, so I could do some active damage dealing or I could put a card out to return a hand. I guess Cleansing Downpour can return a hand now because I'm going to focus more on damage dealing. So yeah, I don't really have to worry about that. Uh, we don't have another Impale. So really the best means of doing things is either Frostbound Drain or Horrifier. So what is going to be more effective... I'll do Horrifier because I can do the cold damage to myself, do the fire damage to Spite, and this doesn't increase Thermal Shockwave's effect at all. And I don't deal myself any damage because of Cryo Chamber. So right now I've dealt four cold. I've only dealt four cold this turn. That is funny. Yeah, one like so. One major problem with misinformation is that it is theoretically possible for her to never play a clue card. Because one of her cards says, like, reveal the top H cards of the villain deck, put any diversions into play, then shuffle the villain trash into the villain deck, and then play a card. She can theoretically, like, never play a clue because she keeps shuffling her trash into her deck and playing that card. It's diversionary tactics, I think is what it's called. So it's theoretically possible for the game to be stalemate, or not even stalemate, you will lose eventually. But theoretically possible for you to never be able to progress because... She never plays a clue. So really, I do honestly think there should be some sort of hero action to lead to clues, as we've all sort of agreed upon. And I mean, it's fine for her cards to be annoying. Like, discard cards that share a keyword with a certain card, that's fine. It's like sabotage. It, it fits within the deck theme, but really the biggest problem is you can't control when she flips at all. You're very luck reliant on her flipping. All right, we can finally reduce spice damage for the first time in this game. I mean, yeah, it will stay in play, but say that she plays diversionary tactics, reveals whatever and then plays a diversion, but the trash was shuffled. Then on her next turn, she plays diversionary tactics, reveals whatever, then plays a diversion. And on her next turn, she plays diversionary tactics, plays whatever, and then reveals a diver or plays a diversion. Then on her next turn, she plays diversionary tactics, reveals whatever, and then plays a diversion. She could keep doing that, theoretically. The chances of that certainly approach zero as, you know, you play longer and longer, but it is theoretically possible, and that's a massive problem. 
Uh, you don't need that. That's already in play. Yeah, Parse as a nemesis does make a lot of sense. I do agree upon that. And hey, automatic damage. Alright, so now what? I don't need to into the stratosphere because there's never anything to into the stratosphere. I think it's lightning slash time. There's not really any reason to do anything else. No, not into the stratosphere. Lightning slash. That one. I mean, I guess I could put Grievous Hailstorm out and do more damage this turn. Yeah. Doesn't matter. We're winning. Uh, so do I have anything to return to hand at the moment? I don't think so. Uh, Fixer could just, at this point, he could play toolboxes and stuff, but we'll put out Coolant Blast and have that return to hand for now. I mean, yeah, any hero who has deck manipulation capabilities is good against misinformation. <laughs> I think we can agree upon that. <laughs> Bounce a shockwave blast off of Fixer. Oh, that is a great plan. Uh, but that's fine. We can do that next turn. Wait, what am I doing? Did I just redirect to Tempest? Or am I confused? What did I just do? Did I, what did I just do? Hold on. That was the play card, right? What a play the card, but instead deals damage. Yeah, I redirected it to absolute zero. Or, oh, 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 this wasn't even who to redirect. You consider the lowest, this doesn't be dealt damage. That's what's happening. Dual crowbars and grease monkey fist in absolute zero, yes. <coughs> or just visionary with twisted ether. Or time cataclysm with fixed point. And just have absolute zero keep hitting himself for fire damage. We are pretty low on hit points. Um, remember when I said I was going to put out something? I'll put out charge. <laughs> reduce your damage by two. Remember when I said we're low on hit points? Let's just reduce your damage by two. Do I even need to do the Toxic at this point? Because I think with Double Hoist Chain and other Worldly Resilience, it's zero right now. So actually, I think I want a different damage type. Uh, whichever one is likely to go through. Which is probably to say nothing. Actually, so, let's see, he deals one projectile, but that's getting reduced to negative one. Demon's Kiss is negative one. Mind Fire is going to do zero. Wait, why is that? No, it should do zero. Yeah, I don't even think there's anything that really matters. I'll just do Toxic. At this point, I don't really anticipate. I guess melee, and then I can 
Ignore damage for a bit more, but whatever. Um, all right, here. Chain Lightning. Talking about Mr. Fixer shenanigans that I totally forgot about. Do Chain Lightning and then do the two hit on Mr. Fixer. Perfect. And then we should win, right? I'll just keep myself high on hit points. I want Absolute Zero to finish the game with more hit points than his two allies combined. So, we refought Spite, and we won, and now every villain tonight was Spite. Just to spite you. <laughs> Mr. Fixer just batting acid rain to reference Tempest changing his damage type to Toxic, and Mr. Fixer redirecting it. Alright, well, I think this is a fine time to wrap up, especially since this stream has been going on for two hours. Which is one hour past the usual time, but that's because I started an hour late. Uh, and again, apologies for anyone who tuned in at 7 because the tweet said starting in 15 minutes at 6.45 and then I wasn't there. I do apologize for the late start, and I do apologize about there not being uh, communication in that regard. But I did try to communicate with Krista and she couldn't uh, get the um, tweet fixed. I probably could have replied to the tweet and said actually 8pm, but... I just popped into the Twitch chat and said, sorry guys, starting at 8, but whatever. Greatest Hits of 2017 is over. We refought four of some classic matches that were faced on Dolphin's Dive. And we won three of them, right? Or did we lose two of them? We lost two of them. Never mind. We lost two of them. We won two of them. Unfortunately, the ones that we won were the ones we had already won. But at least we got to win them in ways that were different than the first time, which is exciting. Chair Spite, Iron Spite, and Spite Spite. Yes. Vengeance Spite. We fought a Vengeance team of Spite Spite and more Spite, and we still lost. But alright, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed these streams. I hope you enjoyed all of them in 2017. And I look forward to some exciting moments in 2018, especially as Oblivion comes out and we get some new content on the d digital game. And we can have some more exciting matches that we can strategize about and have some you know communication about how to fix some of these decks that was some good some good chat today i have to say not that my chats are bad but i, I do like the communication about like how to improve certain decks since i'm not a person on handelabra i or i'm not an active like i'm not working with handelabra i just stream on their channel i'm a little more free to discuss these things instead of sort of being bound by contract to sort of like hide pivotal information because I don't actually have any pivotal information but it's nice being able to discuss and share ideas on improving decks and hopefully tonight you found some good strategy remembered some fond moments and realized how spike <laughs> and uh, misinformation can be improved upon as always as I always end these streams be sure to check out the uh, Sentinels live every Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Dolphins Dive every Thursdays at 7 p.m. except for tonight, and Tales from the Archive every Saturday at, at every Sunday at 7 p.m. Not this Sunday because it's the new year, and I don't know if Sentinels Live will be on Jan on January 2nd, but maybe it could be coming up. But I will certainly be here next Thursday at 7 because I don't have anything exciting going on right now to take me away from the stream, and there's not real any good reason to not have a stream next Thursday, so we're gonna have a stream next Thursday, you can look forward to that. But until then, this was Lou Dolphin, and this was four classic games, I hope you enjoyed them. Again, I keep saying that, I hope you, I just want you, I want you to enjoy this, dammit! Good night. Let's, alright, spite music, here we go. Enjoy my games, damn it! I work really hard on them! <laughs> just kidding. I'm not that weird. Trust me.